In the autumn of 2022, I replaced my aging gas boiler with a brand new air source heat pump. Now there's different reasons why you might decide to go down the green route. The obvious one is environmental, but something that might not be as high up the list as you might think are the costs. Now the reason for this is that an air source heat pump is probably about three times more efficient than a gas boiler. However, the cost of gas is three times cheaper than that of electricity. It sort of cancels each other out, at least on paper. But in reality, is that really the case? So you might think that because I have paid to have an air source heat pump installed in my home, that I am going to kind of skew the figures here and make it look great. But I don't want to do that. I want this to be as scientific as possible. I want to kind of distance myself and let the figures speak for themselves. However, how are we going to do this? How are we going to compare gas boiler with an air source heat pump? Now, the scientific way to do it in a lab conditions might be to have two identical properties, one with a gas boiler, one with a heat pump, and then compare the results because that's really impossible to do. Hmm. So I'm going to try and get as close to that as I can. And this is how it's going to work. I'm going to look at two periods of time that are similar. So we're going to look at October, November and December 2021. This is when I had a gas boiler in my home. And we're going to be looking at October, November and December 2022 when I had an air source heat pump. And then we're going to compare the figures. Now, the obvious question that you might ask at this stage is, well, cost probably, because the cost of gas and electric was considerably cheaper in 2021 than it was in 2022. And don't we all know it? So what we're going to do is look at the figures from 2021, but apply 2022 prices to them. And that way we're going to compare, hopefully, like for like. And the other thing to note here is my home. So what's changed in that 12 month period? And the answer is actually very little. But even if I would had a whole load of new insulation put in, perhaps I had new double glazing or whatever, it, it could have still been relevant for a heat pump install. Whatever you do when you install a heat pump, that's fine. That means it's all fair game to be included in the figures. However, I had very little, almost nothing done to my house. If you want to know the minor tweaks that were made, then have a look at previous videos, all linked in the video description below, where I show the air source heat pump install and you can see for yourself what I had done. Now, another thing to look at before we get to those figures, don't worry, they're on the way in a second, is uh, the standing charge, because the standing charge has also changed between 2021 and 2022. It's gone up a lot. We're just going to completely ignore that. So let's have a look at our first set of figures. And we're going to have a look, first of all, at October 2021. So there, my electricity usage in kilowatt hours was 341 and my gas usage was 753. So that gives us a total cost of electricity based on 2022 prices of £116.71 and the gas £78.73. That giving us a total combined cost of gas and electricity for October 2021, but based on the 2022 prices of £195.44. Okay, that's our baseline then. Let's jump forward a year to 2022. And this is when I had an air source heat pump running my hot water and heating I don't think was probably on, although we'll, we'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. Let's have a look at the figures. So electricity, 418 kilowatt hours. Now you'd expect it to be higher, it's doing my hot water. So that stands to reason. Now gas, you might think, hey, gas? you've changed to a heat pump. It's 34 kilowatt hours of heat energy used for gas. Now, the reason that I've used some gas in 2022 is because, although I've got rid of my gas boiler and I'm using no gas anywhere in the house, there's one place where I am still using it, and that is in my kitchen. I've got a gas hob. The oven is electric. The hob is gas. Now, on that hob, it's just cooking a few vegetables, the occasional stir fry. I mean, you've got to eat but it's very little gas. In fact, most days I'm probably paying more in the standing charge than I am for gas that I'm actually using. Long-term plan, get rid of the gas hob, get rid of gas completely. But anyway, there's gonna be gas figures in the 2022 prices. 
So let's put some money against those. So the 418 kilowatt hours of electricity with 2022 prices would be 143 pounds and six pence. And the 34 kilowatt hours of gas would come to just three pounds 56. Oh, happy days. That gives us a total cost of 146 pounds and 62 pence. That means that the heat pump saving there is 48 pounds 83 for the month of October. Now we want to be completely transparent here. We want to be completely honest with you uh, of what, everything that's going on. I'll give you the facts. You can decide which bits are relevant and how relevant they are. And what we're going to do next is to look at the average temperature outside. For the my part of the world, so this temp average temperature is taken just a little bit away from me, maybe about five or six miles as the crow flies, where there's a weather station used by the Met Office. And in 2021, where I am, the average temperature was 13.5 degrees Celsius. And in 2022, the average temperature was 14.6 degrees Celsius. So it was 1.1 degrees warmer in 2022 across the month of October than it was the same period the previous year. I'll let you decide how much difference that 1.1 average increase in temperature will have made to the overall figures here. I'll let you decide. Now there is something else we should mention before we jump on to November's figures, and that is the fallback temperature, the kind of anti-freezing anti temperature that you might have for your pipes. Most gas boilers, and mine's the same, are set to around seven degrees. So if the temperature drops below seven, then you are, uh, your gas boiler will fire up and you will uh, it will take your pipes, stop your pipes from freezing. Now I didn't know during the month of October until, uh, until the end of the month, that my air source heat pump actually has a fallback temperature as well. And that was set right up at 17 degrees, 10 degrees warmer than my gas boiler was set at. Now, I don't know. I mean, we look at these average temperatures. Would the heat pump have come on during the month of October when I didn't realize it's really quiet? I might not have even known it was running. Maybe. So there's a possibility the heat pump was running more often than I thought because of this really high fallback temperature. Now I mention this now because when we move on to November, I had set the fallback temperature to match the gas. So it was running at seven degrees in November. Also, the temperature was a bit lower. We're heading then into late autumn. And I think there we thought the, the comparison between uh, November 21 and November 22 is gonna be quite good. Fallback temperature, seven degrees, same on both. So let's have a look at those figures for November. Let's go back to 2021. And for electricity, I used 373 kilowatt hours. And for gas, I used 1,650 kilowatt hours. Now, you can see there, obviously, the heating has come on in November. It is a bit cooler. Let's stick some costs and prices against those figures. And it gives us a combined total of using 2022 prices for 2021 figures of 300 pounds and 18 pence. Okay, let's compare that then with 2022 when I had my air source heat pump in place. And that month I used 650 kilowatt hours of electricity, so quite a lot more than 2021, as you would expect, uh, and just 30 hours of uh, kilowatt hours of uh, gas for um, uh, cooking me bits of chicken and me, and, me, and me beans, me beans, you know, me peas, got to cook the peas, all that stuff, all that jazz. And uh, the cost against those for electricity uh, and gas add them together, we get a total combined cost 225 pounds and 60 pence. So that gives uh, a heat pump saving in this particular month of 74 pounds and 58 pence. It's not bad actually, but let's have a look at those average temperatures. See if you think that might have influenced the figures at all. In 2021, the average temperature was 8.5 degrees Celsius. Now in 2022, quite a mild month, the average temperature here, 10.9 degrees, which means it was 2.4 degrees warmer on average during the month of November. How much effect has that had on those figures? I'll let you decide. Okay, let's have a look at December now. December was a weird month, as we'll discover in a moment, but I'll give you the figures anyway. Let's have a look at 2021. I'll slot the figures straight in there. You can see a combined total of 368 pounds and 83 pence. 
uh, the gas figure, the, the gas kilowatt hours, as you, as you can see, are quite a lot higher because it's, it's a cold month. So it na naturally going to be using more gas in that month. Let's have a look at 2022. Combined total there, £382.72. And you can see the electricity really high there, a lot of electricity. So there, the gas boiler has won by a factor of £13.89 cheaper in 2021 than the corresponding 2022 figures. Okay, let's have a look then again at the temperature that month, the, the average temperature, the mean temperature. So in 2021, the mean temperature in this area was 8.8 .8 degrees Celsius. And in 2022, it was 5.2 degrees Celsius. So in 2022, it was 3.6 degrees cooler on average across the month. Now, what on earth is that all about? What actually happened is here in the UK, we had a really cold spell. It was one of the coldest it's been around here for years. Overnight, we had temperatures down about minus seven. During the day, it rarely got above zero. And that was for probably three quarters of the month, at least two and a half weeks, if not three. So that definitely had an effect. The heat pump was obviously working hard. And I can dispel a myth here. If it's freezing cold outside, you can still be nice and warm inside with the heat pump. It's just fine. In fact, that's how heat pumps work. It's the law of thermodynamics. You might read somewhere that if it's cold outside, your heat pump's not going to work. It's utter nonsense. But this figure, this 3.6 degrees difference, yeah, has that had an effect? Yeah, I'll let you decide. Okay, so in summary, what can we say? Well, let's have a look at the total cost across three months, or uh, the quarter, so three months of 2021 and the same in 2022. The total cost in 2021 using the gas boiler for October, November, December, £864.45, that's based on 2022 prices. And for 2022, using the heat pump, £754.94. So the heat pump, £109.52 cheaper across the three months. Now, of course, the fallback temperature was different across all three months. It was 17 for the heat pump in October, 7 in November, 15 in December, but 7 for the gas boiler across all three months. So you decide whether that's made a difference. And of course, we've spoken about the temperature difference. There's been quite a lot of temperature difference across those uh, two years. Has that made a difference? Only you can decide. <laughs> So I think the next thing is to try and demystify what's going on with all these figures. And there's something that can help us here, and it's called the coefficient of performance, the COP. You might also see it referred to as SCOP, the seasonal coefficient of performance, which is like a seasonally adjusted figure because it changes really almost on a daily basis how efficient your equipment is working. Now, a traditional gas boiler is probably only about 80% efficient. For every kilowatt hour of gas you burn, you probably get about 800 watts, watt hours of, uh, of heat energy coming out the other side. And actually, if you go further up the chain, there's even more inefficiencies before it even gets to your gas boiler. With a heat pump, it's completely the other way. For every kilowatt hour of electricity that you use in a heat pump, you will probably get somewhere in the region of three kilowatt hours of heat energy out the other side. That's why they're three times more efficient. It's 300% more efficient. And this is the coefficient of performance of three. And you can actually calculate this coefficient of performance by taking the environmental yield of your system and dividing it by the power consumption. Don't worry if you don't understand what that means. I'm gonna tell you then my COP figures across those three months of 2022, and this will help things. So the COP figure for October 2022 was 3.62. So I was getting 362% efficiency out of my air source heat pump. Every kilowatt hour that went in, I was getting something like 3.62 kilowatt hours out the other side. You get the picture. In November, it was up to 3.81. Now remember, this was where I dropped the fallback temperature. Has that got something to do with it? I don't know. But that's looking really good, getting close to four times the efficiency in, in November. That's great. Now in December, it was only 2.9. So that was a lot colder. It was having to work a lot harder. Maybe that's the reason for it. But I think the key thing here is looking at the difference between the price of gas and electricity. Now the prices that we've been using are for gas, 10.456 pence and for electricity 34.225 pence and the difference between those two figures is 3.2732 so the electricity is roughly 3.3 times higher than the cost of gas so that means that any of these cop figures if they're above 3.3 
that means that the a heat pump is probably going to be better than having a gas boiler. If it's below 3.3, then mm, maybe not. So you can see, because my COP figures were actually 3.6, 3.8, and then 2.9, I've actually done quite well in two of those months, not quite so well in the third. So there you are. Those are the figures. I've given you all the information. I've probably blown your mind with all these numbers. But what do you think? I have to say that I'm a very new heat pump owner. I'm probably not using it in the most efficient way possible, if I'm being completely honest. So I need to kind of look at the way I'm using it, look at my, my methodologies, if you like, of when I'm running different things. Also, it's gonna make a big difference, I think, in the summer because I've got solar panels and I can run some of my electricity. I could probably run the hot water using the solar panels. So my heat pump use in the summer might be uh, I might be using it, but I might not be paying very much for it because of the solar panels. There's all sorts of things that will balance it out over the year and make the annual cost even cheaper, potentially. But I'm going to make more videos about all of this and, and see how things carry on going. Uh, and I am going to try and keep an open mind. You, you can probably tell from the way I'm talking. I do think the heat pump has been a good purchase. I think it's working well. But, you know, I, I'm open to looking at these figures, looking at the spreadsheet and trying to work out what really is working and, and, and whether it is the right choice for me. I'd love to know what you think about this. And if you have any questions, please do post them below and I'd love to answer them. And I hope this has been of some interest, particularly if you're thinking of going down a greener route for your home energy. Thank you so much for watching Rambly Electric. I will see you for another video very soon.